I'm Josh from Vacuums R Us and Sewing 2 in Boulder, Nevada, Colorado. Today we're going to be working on a Ricard Tandem Air. Uh, the symptom this machine is giving the customer is that uh, the brush roller will turn off um, as if there's a jam in the brush roller and the red light will, uh, will flicker. So this is it's per design on these higher end machines. If you run something over, the brush roll will automatically shut off to protect the belt and the motor system. On this machine, it's giving a essentially a false positive on that, and the red warning light is turning on. Uh, this is an R40 we're working on. Uh, this video is gonna be relevant to all of our car and Simplicity branded tandem airs that are the larger models. They have two models. Right now with our car, it's the R30 is the smaller, the R40 is the larger. We're working on the 40 series. I'll try to put a series of, I'll try to put all the model numbers this is applicable to in the description if I can. If you have the smaller unit, an R30, some of these things are gonna be relevant to you um, and some are not. You can watch the video, some of the screws are gonna be at different places, but conceptually the machines are designed similarly. These are just larger, more powerful units. We're gonna start from the bottom of this machine. It's super helpful if you have a workbench that's approximately waist height. You can flip the machines over and you can start on the bottom. We'll be stable right here. So we got two screws right here for this base plate. Again, we're working on a Recar R40. This is exactly the same for the Simplicity S40. Um, and it's very similar for their previous larger tandem air models. Those are the machines that have two blower motors in them. I'm gonna pop the brush real quick. So I know what's wrong with this. It's the print, printed circuit board we're gonna replace, but there's a number of other things you're gonna wanna check on your way in before you do a circuit board replacement that could potentially be causing uh, a false hall sensor, a false jam warning. So for one, if the brush roll is not spinning freely. So this brush roll is pretty free. I actually would like to probably service this brush roll and make it spin a little bit better, but this is not bad. Sometimes if you manage to get a bunch of hair or something into the ends, you can gum it up and the brush roll won't spin freely. So what happens is it's not spinning fast enough. The machine senses that something's stuck and it will shut itself off. This is a pretty common, this is a pretty common uh, malady. Uh, if you are not an authorized Recar service technician, this is where you stop. And in fact, I would suggest you not even get this far. This is where you stop. Do not go any farther at this point. Um, from here, it gets really hairy. These machines are intended not to fail. Uh, the belt is not supposed to break. So what we're getting into now is not, you know, it's not your standard cheapo Bissell with a $4 belt that you replace. Uh, from this point in, if your belt falls off the motor, you're ripping the whole machine apart. So we checked the brush roll. The brush roll is okay. I have, I believe, five screws. Two, and then behind the wheels. Three, four, and then I have a fifth right here. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna be careful not to lose my screws. I'll all drop out, one, two, three so far. I've got two more screws to go. Four, got one stuck in there still. So I'm gonna recline the machine all the way back and I'll pop my lid and the top will come right off. We'll set that aside. I'm gonna try to find that other screw. There it is, five screws. So this, this machine has a double click mechanism um, where if I lock right there, um, it's designed that way I'll swap over here. It's designed that way so if you're vacuuming along and you want to lift it up to get onto a throw rug, it will lock. Click that again, it will lay all the way down. So as I mentioned, um, I said, hey, this is where you want to stop. This is why the belt falls off readily, right? So right here is where we'll pause for a second, look at a couple other things that can cause a false hull sensor. One of those is a stretch belt, super common on the R40. Uh, the <clears throat> hood right here, says lifetime belt if you bring this to a dealer who tries to charge you for a belt walk out the belts are under warranty for life or car will actually send your dealer a free belt the belts are not cheap they're like 18 bucks if you're the original owner and you have proof of purchase on this machine you should be getting a belt for free they might charge you to install it but they should not be charging for the belt and they know that now again the belt's not supposed to stretch it does particularly in dry climates we're in colorado and we see this type of issue a lot more frequently here in Colorado. Um, we're at altitude, it's very dry, we have high static, right? So our belts, they dry rot, they stretch out, they get hot on these high performing machines. As the belt stretches, it'll slip, then your brush roller won't spin fast enough and the machine will sense that the brush roller is jammed and the machine will shut off, right? 
So one of the first things you should do if you're getting this intermittent you know, brush roller turning off is replace the lifetime belt. It sounds, uh, it sounds unintuitive, but I, we see it every single time that the belt is always stretched on these units here in Colorado. So the next thing, and we've already done this actually when we brought this unit in, this is the hall sensor itself. So this is the mechanism that senses whether your brush roller is spinning. Um, and what it does, it's got a little sensor right there. There's magnets inside this wheel as they spin. The sensor will sense how quickly those magnets are spinning. Um, and if the spinner right here where the belt runs on this slows down, then the unit will sense that the brush roll is not spinning fast enough and possibly jams and it will shut itself off. Very frequently we'll see large volumes of hair will somehow manage to work their way in here and they'll bind this thing up. Um, that was actually the case with this and this is the initial repair that we did was cleaning and lubricating. Um, I actually got to see this unit being manufactured in St. James this summer. Um, and I think we have a video clip we could, uh, we could insert maybe and, and show them actually, uh, actually building this unit out in, uh, in Missouri in their factory. So that's not the issue though. We already, we already did that. We cleaned it out. We're still getting this false hall sensor. So we're gonna go all the way in to the PCB, the printed circuit board. That is the most common um, reason, the printed circuit board going bad is the most common reason that these machines have a false uh, hall sensor al alarm. And the printed circuit board is right inside here. We have to go in pretty deep to get to it. So I'm gonna stand the machine up because there is a loaded spring right here that is a spring assist to make the machine not weigh quite as much when you're leaning it back. And it needs to be in the upright position to take off that, that spring assist. If you take it off while it's in a recline position, the spring assist is loaded and it's gonna pop out at you. So I'm gonna lean it back again and we'll see that spring assist starts coming up here, right? This little thingy falls out sometimes, not a big deal if it does, it just goes right in there, not a big deal. So next we're gonna take off um, the motor mounts. There's, there's four motor mounts on these metal mounts. A really good idea, there's a lot of strain here. These are not light machines. They have two large motors in them, so they're not light. And it was a really good idea that they chose to use these, these uh, motor mounts. This is a pretty, pretty stinking good design. So I lost one screw down there. We'll see if we can get it out with our screw puller. Nope, we'll get it out later. All right, so I've got my motor mounts out. There's a zip tie right here that secures this wire. Um, it's here to keep the wire away from potentially running into the motor and getting burnt up. That's why it there. it's there, but we're gonna need to snip it off and replace it later so that we have enough room to work. So you'll snip that. Be careful not to snip your wires while you're doing that. There's a wire retainer down here we're gonna pop off. That's keeping that wire down in the groove. We wanna do that so we have plenty of room. You can also take off the hall sensor at this point, um, right here. I'm not going to, there's a spring right there that has to be screwed in. If you take the hall sensor off, you have to reattach that. It's kind of a pain. I've got enough room at this point to do what I need to do without taking that off, I believe. Sometimes these wires are a little tighter and you have to. So it is what it is. Um, the next piece I'm gonna take off is the intake right here, the intake cover. I've got three screws over here, one, two and three we'll notice on top of the intake cover this is your dirt sensor right here that's what allows the light to flick on these higher end models on the r40s they have a dirt sensor that uh, illuminates the headlights amber when there's debris flowing into the into the unit so i can now lift the uh, upper housing out of the lower housing i'm going to lift it straight up and it will pop right out this little ring over here is gonna come off and I'm gonna pivot my lower housing all the way around. So I now have my lower housing kind of next to it. I've got plenty of play over here, this wire, I don't need to take anything else off. And I've got the room I need to, to work on the machine. So there's a retaining metal retaining ring here. I'm gonna pop this off. This is kind of holding this clamshell together. There's another one over on this side, and I also want to note there's a rubber gasket on this side um, as well. Super important. I'm going to set this aside, and we'll see if I forget to put that back on when I reassemble it and have to take it apart again. Now I'm going to take the, um, the, uh, the, motor, uh, the motor cover off. Um, I've got to take out my charcoal infused filter up here. This is the filter that removes odor. This is an actual pet vacuum. 
So it does have a charcoal infused filter. I've got one screw up here. And then I've got one, two, three, I believe it's four screws on the lower housing. So one up here, one right there, one on the side. And then I've got another one over here near the spring assist. I think that's it if I remember correctly. And it pops off. And I'm gonna flip this over and grab all my screws before they disappear. One, two, three, four. So I've got all my screws. And I actually just remembered, so this is a newer model R40. I didn't actually have to take this screw off. On the older model R40s, um, this, uh, the, the tandem airs, this uh, filter holder here was, uh, was sort of on top of the motor housing. So if you took the motor cover off, you had to take the filter cover off. I forgot on the newer ones, I actually modified that to make this a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. All right, so now we're all the way in um, and we have the printed circuit board right here, which you have access to. However, I wanna show you a modification. So part of the reason that these circuit boards are going bad on these machines, and, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise, this has been an issue for years, uh, is apparently static electricity from these motors is actually popping these boards and making them overly sensitive. Um, it's been a tough uh, issue for Ricard to address because they don't see it consistently. It's, it's not something they see from all their dealers. They only have a few dealers that are complaining about it, and the dealers that are complaining about it are vehement that it's happening. What they discovered over time was that the dealers that are complaining about it are the dealers that are in drier, colder climates where they have higher static electricity, right? Um, and so they narrowed it down to a static problem. Um, they tried a, a couple of different fixes, um, and as they've continued production of the product, they've finessed it, <clears throat> and they've got better and better. This is an older unit. This is, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, a dot six. Yeah, this is an R40.6. So that dot is your revision number. On the dot six, they had attached this wire to the side of this motor, a grounding wire, which they then ground with um, conductive tape to the side of the housing, right? So that was the modification there. And that worked to a degree. Um, what we found was happening though, is that just due to the vibration of the machine, these grounding wires were sometimes wiggling loose and they were losing contact. So I, I don't remember the revision, but I know on the dot eights and above, they have a, a new mechanism, a new grounding strap on here, which reduces the likelihood that the PCB is gonna be um, damaged from static electricity. Uh, we can actually uh, upgrade this one with those two parts. It's really simple. Um, and this is something you really should always be doing when you're opening these. If you're a warranty or service center, you should be stocking these parts, which I will put, it's a wrong size screwdriver. I will put the part numbers down there. Um, I am shocked at the number of service centers who are not aware that this, this change has been made. Definitely in your and your customer's best interest to perform this, this change. So what you do is you just pull the ground out, you pull this ground wire, right? Um, you can leave the tape on. There was some conversation about whether the tape stays on or comes off. Um, I spoke with their, their lead tech this summer and officially we do want to be leaving that tape on the side of it, the conductive tape. So there's two parts we're going to use. One of them is this simple little lock washer, right? And we're saving the screw that came off the motor. Okay, so real simple. I'm going to take the screw that I took off, put the washer on there and I've got my clamp right here. I'm gonna kind of push that down in there and it's, it's gonna, it's kind of like spring loaded because we're bending it. Go ahead and screw that in there. And we'll see that we now have this ground clamp goes and it applies pressure directly up against the housing, directly on that conductive tape that we have down there. So this will ground your motor, any potential static buildup against your main housing and should prevent future PCB failures, which is what, we're, is what we're addressing today. So at this point, I would suggest that you take a picture of this with your phone so you can figure out where all of this stuff goes back to um, when, you're, uh, when you're done. Um, I have it memorized, so I'm not gonna do that. And also, I just, you know, I like to live on the edge, right? So these right here, these little hoses are sensors that will sense uh, the amount of airflow that you have 
um, and will let you know when your bag is full based on a reduction in airflow. Um, they also will let you know if you have a clog. Okay, so I'm gonna ask my video editor to give us a good solid pause right here. So if anybody has already taken this apart, they can pause the video and look at where the wires go. All right, and I'll start ripping stuff off. These suckers are tight, let me tell you. Um, it is a bugger to get them off without causing damage. But fortunately, this is a bad PCB, so, you know. Grab some needles. So there's not clips on these. these. These don't have clips that you have to depress. They're simply pressure fit. Um, and, but they, I mean, they are pressure fit. Holy cow, they're pressure fit. This one's not so bad. So on the bottom, we have a couple of ribbon cables. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. Um, and these smaller cables, I'm gonna pull off right here. Gently. Do not break these suckers. Um, the one I just pulled off is part of the main wire loom, which goes through the upper body of the machine. And let me tell you, I'm not making a video on how to do a wire loom replacement. Holy cow, it's a pain. Hope I never have to do that again. Um, so we've got the PCB out. We'll get the new PCB. Cut that out for sure. Uh, while we're in here, I'll point to the thermal sensor that's back here. You have a thermal sensor right there that is essentially a reheat switch. Um, that will, if, it, if your machine overheats, that will kick your machine off. There's a tiny protruding button out the back of the machine, which is a reset button. If the machine kicks that reset for some reason and shuts itself off, don't just go hitting the reset button. It shut itself off for a reason. You have a reduction in the airflow that's causing the machine to overheat. Uh, layman's terms, you got a clog. And, and I can't tell you how many times in a given day somebody says, well, I know it's not clogged, I already checked, and then we pull out a clog. If it's uh, overheating, it's clogged. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put this all back together. And at some point, some propeller head is gonna make a comment that I am not uh, in an ESD safe environment, that I'm working on a carpet, that I could potentially damage this circuit board while installing it into this machine by wearing these rubber gloves. My suggestion would be to get out of your mom's basement, go touch grass. Uh, we understand that you know lots and lots about electronics and we're very proud of you. If you make some dumb comment about ESD, I will roast you. Just fair warning, I'm not afraid to get petty. It's under warranty. If I roast a circuit board, the car is a great company. They will simply replace the stinking circuit board. Okay? I'm gonna put the hoses back on. Whoops, 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 whoops. I'm gonna put the hoses on right. All right, got the hoses on. All right, so I'm gonna tell you the difference between a senior technician and experienced technician and a guy who's been doing this a few years. This is a defective part. I'm going to put this defective part in the garbage. That's why I'm a senior technician. I'm not gonna save it for no freaking reason. I'm gonna throw it away. All right, we're gonna put the wires back on down here. All right, so I've got all the wires back on here. Um, the one that you might find troublesome, there's two white wires um, on top of each other. Uh, the Connectors are color coded, so you're blue on top, red on the bottom. Um, and now I'm gonna push it back in. Move my that around. All right, and now I need to get my um, hoses back on as well. All right, so we got our hoses back on. If you wanna 
take a look at that top one the that one's going over there this one's going over this is this side all right good enough that's long enough you can pause the video and, and watch it if you got lost i'm gonna put the lid back on we want to be careful to make sure everything lines up we want to keep this sealed as much as possible there's a couple of gaskets that you want to play around with here get in there pretty good to me. I got some cracks which are going to seal up when I put the screws back in. I'll set my clutch down real low so I don't do any plastic damage. I tamp these things down like you would a head gasket back and forth. All right so now we're going to drop this back in. We've got two metal rings on both sides. I'm going to Put that on it might be a little bit tight because you just popped it apart uh, you may have to push it together there's ridges on this thing which will line up and they actually use a mallet at the factory because when they're new they are super tight and these things do not go on they kind of tap them on they got a special ring that goes around that you should not need that much On the other side, we'll put the metal ring on. And again, look for those. There's little grooves there. And then there's notches on the metal ring. Oh, and we're snapped in. And then we're not gonna forget this gasket. I'm saying that out loud. All right. I've got the other retainer over here. And I'm gonna lift this up. And I'm gonna kind of swing my main housing around. If you don't love this, you'll have a lot more room to play if you remove the hull sensor, if that's your preference. Um, if you find dealing with this is a little bit of a pain, you can remove the hull sensor, but it's just, you're gonna have to put it back on again, so. All right, so, I'm generally in place. I'm gonna put these on, I'm gonna lift it back up again. They fell off on me. Got my motor mount there and that side. I'm gonna put my motor mount over here. This bugger keeps coming off of me. Here we go. So this is the tough part. I was crazy at the factory watching how easy it was for them to do this, but you have to lower both sides at like the exact same time. Um, and then put the gasket on. You have to lower them just perfectly. I have my hand under the upper body to kind of support it and kind of kind of let it feed down. There we go. And it just dropped in because there's these grooves, these metal, you know, the upper housing kind of mounts go into these grooves, one, uh, four grooves. And at the same time, you have to hold this gasket in as you're dropping it. So it kind of takes five hands, um, but with practice, you can... You can figure it out, get it done. I'm gonna clamp down the motor and I'm gonna re-zip tie the lower wire loom. So I've got four motor mount screws. Make sure you have a magnetic bit for this part because those screws will drop down in there and disappear forever. feed this wire back around the back of the of the uh, upper motor mount screw holding I'm gonna push that down into there and then I'm going to put this securing washer in here all right and then I'll zip I'll re-zip tie that Somewhere. There we go. I don't love where that landed because it's going to press against the outer housing. So I'm going to try to 
Move that around. There we go. And now I can push that back in. There we go. And that should work pretty good right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put the intake cover back on. We'll flip that around here. This wire is supposed to go under there if I remember correctly. Oh no, you know what? They made a modification to that. I don't think that, yeah, that wire doesn't go under there anymore. That's actually an extra, extra doodad from a previous revision. We're, there's been so many revisions. Ricard's been making this model for, I don't even know, 20 years, I'm guessing. I don't know, more than that. And the thing about making the same type of vacuum or any appliance for a long time is that you know, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and inventing a bunch of new problems, what happens is by the time we're at this point in the game, they've worked out so many problems that the unit is just so much more stable, higher performing. And, and that's the difference between companies like Ricard. I'm going to stand this up to put my, I'm going to stand this up to put my, uh, my up, upward uh, support in. Interestingly, this is actually something that came out about, I think, four or five years after they started making this to uh, make the machine easier to use. But anyway, that's the difference between a company like Ricard or Sharp. I mean, Sharp comes out with a new model every three weeks. Every one of them is garbage. And there's something, there's a, there's a fundamental flaw in all of them. This thing, they've been working the flaws out for 20 years. So by the time, you know, if you've never owned one, and you know, now is the time that you're gonna own your first one, You've got a lot of history behind you of, of people working out kinks. I, you know, I showed you the static, the weird static issue that affected us in Colorado. And I think, I think New Mexico actually had an issue with it too. Um, just weird stuff like that gets worked out, you know, over time. So I'm going to put the belt on, but I'm not going to put the cover on yet. Uh, I'm going to put the brush roller on first and I'm going to have it in this position while I do it. Uh, this is a tight fit because it's a serpentine belt. It's not a stretch belt. Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm set over here. I'm good. And it's going to be a really, really tight fit. I'm going to get my <clears throat> one end in over here. Okay, so this end is in. This end has to go in still. And I'm going to snap it in just like that. If you have, this belt was installed previously. Uh, as I mentioned, we had replaced the belt to attempt to alleviate this problem. Didn't didn't alleviate it, so we had to do the PCB. If this is a brand new belt you're putting in, you're gonna find it to be really tight. I mean, you're gonna think you're gonna break stuff when you're putting it in there, you are not. So I'm putting this back down again to put the lid back on. There are tabs on the front of the lid, which will set in there. So you wanna go front to back, make sure the front is hooked in, and then you'll, you'll feel it set in real good. I'm gonna go back into upright position and I'm gonna hold it as I check to make sure those tabs went in and I'm gonna flip it back to the original position we saw when we started this project back up like this again. So the bottom is being held in from gravity and I'll start tagging in some screws. The reason I installed that brush roll before I put the lid on was in case I slipped the belt off while I was trying to install it. If the belt fell off the motor housing I'd have to take the top off all over again. So I put the brush roll in and then I put the upper housing back on. One more over here. So I have two screws remaining, which are for my base plate. Tap that in. The last screws. I'm gonna hand roll this towards me to make sure that it's not bound up. I can feel the tension from the motor on it, and this feels about right to me. I don't hear any crazy stuff going on there, and the crazy stuff in the fan. <clears throat> We're gonna perform our test here, and I'm actually gonna show you a couple things you're gonna to want to test on these after you've done a PCB or really any of those other issues with the hull sensor or potential belt replacement, any of that stuff. Um, there is one final issue that can cause this false hull sensor, which we did not address. Um, and that is actually the light board up here. Uh, the light board, the hull sensor goes through the light board. Um, if this main PCB replacement doesn't fix it, which it most likely will, the final thing we're gonna replace is the hull board. Now, I'm gonna take a shot here. 
at Taconi Tech Services. I have um, worked on, I don't even know how many of these we've worked on, probably more than any other store in, in the country. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I think that probably. I have never once seen a wire loom go bad in these. Um, not once ever have I seen a wire loom go bad. It is a huge job to replace a wire loom. We've replaced a dozen of them. It has never resolved the issue. If you're a service center and you're at the end of the road, and you're just losing your mind, you've replaced the PCB, you replaced the light board, the hall sensor, the belt, it's not fixing it. And Taconi says, well, replace the wire loom. Don't. It's a waste of your time. Your wire loom is not dead. I don't care what they say. I've never seen one that's bad. I honestly think they kind of shoot that out there because they're at the end of their wits. It is most likely that you received a defective PCB. And I know you replaced the PCB and it's still doing it. Your PCB that you got in the box is probably defective. We've had that happen many, many times where we get a brand new PCB um, that is defective. And, and, and you know, I don't want to bang on these guys. Their QA is crazy. Their quality assurance is great. They're in Missouri. We're in Colorado. We have much different static here. Okay, so the PCB the, uh, probably passed QA there, and, and I, I absolutely believe it, but it's not passing here. So replace the second PCB. That's my rant. So we're gonna test this out. So the brush roll turns on, right? Turn it off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower, it's actually all the way up right now. I'm gonna lower this all the way down so that we've got some pretty good tension, pretty good pressure on that brush roll. You can hear it too, look at that thing. Popping up the dirt out of the carpet on the bed. This is why you own an R40. Look at that. I'm gonna apply pressure. See if I can get a false hall sensor. Pushing pretty hard. I got a lot of tension. And it's not shutting off. So finally, I'm gonna check to see if the hall sensor works the way it's supposed to. If something does run over, this is what's supposed to happen. See the red light comes on. Let's me know that I did something it doesn't like. Turn it off. Turn it on again. That is crazy, right? You can see the dirt just pulling towards the front of it. These things are a beautiful thing when they're working, and fortunately this one is now working. Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer your questions in the comments. Give me a couple days. I'm a busy guy. This isn't the only thing I do. But legitimately, if you do have questions about this repair, if you're struggling with something, Shoot a question over, either I or uh, one of our other technicians will answer you.